Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at a couple of products uh, called Tekken or Tekken. Uh, these are uh, smart outlets. Okay, and we've got two different types here. Uh, one of which is an, well, indoor-outdoor uh, type of unit. And the other one, of course, is strictly indoor. As technology progresses, we're getting more and more um, tech toys to run our households whether we're at home or not and uh, that's actually kind of cool because if you're going away and uh, you know you want to make people think you're at home you can set these things on timers you can voice control them um, they run off of Wi-Fi connections uh, via an app and uh, this one here has battery protection this one here is app control, voice control, Wi-Fi connection, and set timer. Um, we have a few of these smart devices around the house already. And um, we control various items. Uh, I have a charge station that I control. Um, my wife controls uh, one of the lights by her desk. I control my studio uh, equipment in my room, my shop outside, her coffee pot, and... Uh, so it's a lot of fun um, at one on one side of the fence and the other side of the fence. It's actually good security in a sense too, especially when you are away from the home and you want to uh, you know turn your lights on and off at certain intervals, especially during the night. It kind of detours uh, B and ears, you know. Uh, but at the same time, it makes your life a lot easier too to be able to control stuff via your phone. So for example. Uh, with my wife and her coffee pot, if she forgets to turn it off, or she thinks she may have forgotten to turn it off, uh, and we're out anywhere, uh, doesn't matter where we are, um, as long as she has her phone, because um, she controls her coffee pot and her computer, I control my other devices off my own, but uh, if we're out somewhere, she forgets, she can check her phone to see if the, the connection is turned on, and if it is, then she can just simply click on the... Um, device uh, within her app and shut off her coffee pot or shut off her light or turn on her light whatever she needs to do um, now the app uh, that's being used uh, to control a lot of these devices uh, is actually this one right here and you can see I've got some devices uh, of my own already set up I got my shop you can name things which is great so we got my studio gear um, we've got my charge station which is turned on currently um, my shop outside now I have a unit like this except with three plugs on it and my shop is on switch number one I haven't named these yet um, but you can turn them all on all off or just you know one at a time it's up to you you can either press the little power button indicator or the side socket um, I don't have anything in the other two sockets as of yet now this uh, just gonna bring up this app here just boom this is called smart life is the name of the app and um, it'll control these as well to get the, the get the app um, you can scan this in here or go to the app store with your Apple device or Google Play store with your Android device and uh, just download the app that way as well so there's more than one way to get it uh, on here are the specifications. Uh, outdoor Smart Outlet gives you our model, which is an SS31. Uh, Waterproof level is IP44. Uh, so do not submerge it in water. It wouldn't be a cool thing to do. Maximum power is eight, eight, 1,875 watts resistance loading. Maximum of 15 amps. Oh, maybe I'll swap this one with my outdoor one. It's 10 amps. Okay, I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Rated voltage 125. Working temperature minus 20 to plus 60 Celsius uh, or minus 4 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Remote control uh, Smart Life app compatible with Android 4.1 and above, of course, iOS 8.0 or above. Suitable for indoor, outdoor, and damp locations. Not for water immersion or for using directly exposed to water. I mean it can get rained on, it's not a big deal. Um, risk of electrical shock, blah blah blah, do not open, no serviceable parts, you know the usual jazz. So let's take a look at this sucker. We'll start with this one. So we do get a user manual 
that is going to go through it and tell us how to set this sucker up. Okay, put that aside. I've done this a few times, so it should be rather straightforward to show you this one at a time. Now, to get any of these units, uh, simply click on one of the links. Uh, this is an Amazon dealer. Um, and uh, click on one of the links, and uh, you can purchase these things. So we've got the, uh, the sockets here are uh, rubber covered, so that creates a lot of good waterproofing, or water resistance, we'll say. And that actually comes right off, too, which is kind of cool. Uh, so we'll just pop that back on there. Let's open up one of them. I have a lamp here we're going to plug in. And of course you do need a grounded outlet. So do not chop off the ground plug. Okay. So. Instantly turned on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Smart Life app. Fire it up. And we need to add a device. Add manually or search. Uh, automation, I don't know. So, smart settings. Haven't done this in a little while. Home management. Add a family. No, we don't need to add a family in here. Been a while, guys. Multiple socket, others. Must have been an update to my program because what I'm looking for does not seem to be here. So, we are going to take a quick boo at the instructions. Start the bind process. Okay. That's searching for a device now. Alright. There we go. It's got it. And completed. Smart Outdoor Plug 5. New device firmware found. Firmware mainly updates the following points. Please confirm whether it is upgraded. Stability. Okay, so we got to upgrade the firmware already. That is good that they uh, do actually keep things up to date. Um, like I said, I've had updates on this program already, which kind of threw me for a bit of a loop at first, but no big deal. And it doesn't take long to do the update. Successful. Okay, so now you can see we have two sockets here. It's going to be one of these. So all off. There we go. 
that easy. So now you can go into timers and you can set up timers in here. Uh, there is voice commanding capable. I don't use the voice command feature and I haven't really gotten into it myself on any of my units because I have no use myself for doing voice commanding on something. I'd rather just manually, you know, look and see if it's on or off and then do my thing. And I don't personally set timers on my own stuff, but, you know, it is very simple to, you know, set a timer up. You know, boom. So your countdown timer, etc. Set her up and away you go. Okay. So now we should see we've got a smart outdoor plug. We got my charge station, my studio, and of course my shop outside. So now when you unplug this thing from power. It should remember it because my other ones do. Even if I unplug them for even a couple of days, I can plug them back in and they're automatically refound again. So you don't need to go to your Bluetooth settings. You don't need to go to your Wi Fi settings either. And uh, you just go right through the app and it does everything for you. So now, smart plug outdoor. And it remembered. Okay. These units are very inexpensive, and there are different types for pretty much any need. Um, the other style that we have are like little round smart plugs. It's like one little socket thing, so you can plug one thing into it basically, unless you're going to run a power bar like I did. I actually have uh, one of the round ones in my studio, and I have a power bar plugged into it. And then this way, all my studio equipment goes on at one time, or it goes all off at one time, which is quite convenient for me. I don't have to push a bunch of switches anymore, which is kind of nice. So, anyways, very nice little unit. Like I said, this thing handles up to 15 amps, so I am definitely going to switch this with uh, my one that's outside, because my one outside is only good for 10 amps, and it has three sockets. This is two sockets and 15 amp draw. So that works out actually really good because um, my some of my shop tools, uh, actually my saw, runs up to 15 amps draw. So this would be perfect for that. So that's a pretty cool little unit, very compact. So let's take a look at our power bar now. This is a different unit. Now I'm not going to talk about prices because prices can change. Um, this has a five foot extension cord on it, or five foot cord. Now this one's kind of nice because it also has USB charging capabilities. Oh, I like that. It's kind of like a little rainbowy design. Okay, so we need to add a new device. And push and hold. Okay, I'm going to plug the lamp into this. Right now it's on. Search. So now it's searching. And it's found the power strip now. So we touch the power switch. Completed. Ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we have full control. Ooh, this is nice. I can control each individual socket with this one. So that's that one. Turn that off. This one. Now that's sweet. I knew that the one with the two in it would do it, because it's like that, but I didn't know that this one would do it. Because this is basically just like a regular power bar from the looks, right? Okay, so two. And we want number one. That's sweet. 
Okay, now for the USB. Plug a cable in. These things need a recharge anyways. And this is my wireless unit I use for one of my guitars. Well, most of my guitars actually. Okay, so we'll plug that in. So right now, from the looks of it, the port is turn should be turned off. Okay, the port was off now. Okay, so okay, so it's flashing. So the port's off. So now it's on. So it's now charging. Now this is not going to give us individuals, is it? This is not going to give us any visuals. So you got one button here controls all your ports. So that port is working fine. That port's working fine. Might as well check all the ports while we're at it. That one's working. And that one's working. So I can turn my light off and let that keep going. So now we've got a smart power strip. We have the smart outdoor, which is currently offline uh, because it's unplugged or it would say online. My charge station, of course, is over there. My studio um, and of course my shop outside has a triple and it actually shows three plugins here. This one doesn't actually show um, two plugins, but it's wide enough that it's narrower, and you know you can tell. And when you go to it, go to it as well, like I click on it, I have all three plugs there. Okay. Um, and of course, my studio, etc. Smart power strip. So that's actually quite cool. I'm not sure where I'm going to use this in the house, but I'm going to think about it. Because now I got USB charging. I might even actually use this in my studio and plug my computer into it. Because I think I have, I don't think I have that many to worry about in there. And I can have my USB stuff uh, plugged into here as well for charging purposes. So that's kind of cool. Um, now, uh, as far as build quality goes, they are, they are made out of plastic housings, which is fine. They do seem sturdy enough, you know, they're not chintzy chintzy uh, type of cheapness, you know. Um, you can hang this one up, okay, uh, which is quite nice. And it doesn't need a long cord when it's being plugged in outside anyway, so, you know, it's kind of nice that way, just right by there. You can either leave it dangle like this plugged in or you can secure it to the other wall. This one here is just going to sit wherever you put it, so there's no hang up on this. But it is nice, you can control all, all four of these, all independently. Plus your USB is independent, but only, you know, one button to run all of them at once, which is fine. Yeah, that's, that's normal, that's not a big deal. It would be neat though, if you could control each USB port slot, the same way you do your sockets. That would be a cool upgrade, I think. Okay, not that I have any complaints about this. It's fine, you know. I like it just as is. But I think, you know, maybe if the company goes back to to reinvent, we'll say. Uh, I think you know, individual um, switch for each port would be kind of cool. Then you can say, okay, I want this on and then I want this off, but leave it plugged in, but have it that item turned off. Like I have a charger for my camera. And uh, I'd like to be able to have that charger unit plugged in but not drawing power until I need to, right? So that would be kind of nice to be able to turn each one of these USB ports either on or off the same way you can control the wall sockets. But either way, um, as far as um, things go, I, I would have like no problem... Um, I haven't water tested this one, of course, but I really don't require the need to. Um, I would definitely take the instructions at their word for it, only because I have one of these units already. It's not a Tekken model, it's another one. Uh, same thing, though, idea. Um, 
and I've had it outside even during the winter and I've had no problems and we get pretty cold winters in Canada let me tell you and this winter we got some pretty drastically cold temperatures and I had no hiccups with the system whatsoever and uh, it's just because I want to work in my shop over the winter and uh, I run a hundred foot extension cord from my shop to the house to plug in and um, so that cord gets buried in the snow and uh, then plugged into my unit and uh, not one problem whatsoever you know so with the cold it's never been a problem you know any snow that's hit it's never been a problem you know so so that's good it's very reliable now being that this also shares the same app as my other devices um, I'm also going to tell you this and because uh, we found this out from experimenting uh, and this was something I didn't know. Some of this technology was pretty new to me. Some of the features were still new. Um, I've known about the technology for a while, but I don't go and research stuff that much unless I'm really, really wanting it. Um, so I was first approached by a, another company to do these smart plug things a while back, and uh, which is what got me started at the one outside, and then I ended up getting the other plugs and now these. Uh, and I'm just loving these things. I'm telling you, it really makes um, for being able to control things in your house just wonderful. Um, but um, we were out driving uh, in North Bay, which is about a 30-minute drive from here where we live out in the country. And uh, I thought, you know what, for an experiment, let's try something. So I turned on my studio gear because obviously all my power switches are all turned on. So I just boom one touch and everything turns on right or it's all off um, I turned on the thing and I told my wife I says you know just to make sure that there's there's no way there could be any kind of you know oh if you get closer to the house then it actually finally kicks in thing I shut my phone off right after activating it we got in the door and the sucker was turned on my studio was lit up I was like yes okay which tells me that on any device you're using this program with, um, you need basically two things for access anywhere. And I mean anywhere. You need to have a data plan, of course, on your phone or device, but you also need the Wi-Fi connectivity because when you initially set up the Wi-Fi on these units, like if this is gonna be your first unit, there is a Wi-Fi thing you have to set up where it uses the password to your internet connection. Once that's logged in and you start scanning in, you know, your smart devices like I have here, you know, all my smart devices, um, <coughs> it go, it combines itself with your data on your device. So if you are away from home, you could be a half an hour away, an hour away. You can be like across the other side of the bloody country. Okay. As long as you're, um, system is connected together then you can control everything now I don't know about turning off my router at home if there would be any effect uh, over the system that I don't know but I suspect that there is a connection there but we will try an experiment where we turn off the router and um, be away from the house at the time and then I'll see what happens trying to activate this stuff if even through my data it can go through but I got I have a feeling it might not go that way only because um, our Rogers phones we have Rogers rocket hub for our internet but I don't think that part makes so much of a difference um, but there's that connection point but you we found so far that with our current setup we can be anywhere we want and it connects just fine so but uh, anyways no big deal so if you're interested in either one of these systems or other ones um, check out the links below in the description of the video uh, for either one of these units you can check out the store um, if you know how to get to a person's Amazon store by clicking on the the, the seller store name and all that um, see what else they've got but I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I really like the USB access. That's great. Of course, all four sockets are going to be all independent. Um, and this unit here for, for outdoor use, 
um, definitely uh, would recommend it and 15 amps is perfect. Now as far as the back of this goes, let's check the specs. So this is an SS30 and the smaller one is an SS31. So this is the SS30 here. Uh, rated voltage 100 to 240, 10 amps. Okay, uh, rated output 1250 watts. Working temperature is minus 10 to minus 70. Is that minus, well, minus, minus 10 dash 70 Celsius. Wi Fi frequency, of course, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 foot length of cord. You do get a 12 month warranty with this, okay, and you can go to support.us at uh, Tekken or Tekken home.com okay again you scan that in for your app or just download from the app store or get it on google play for your android devices um, and then this smaller one again this is the ss31 it's water level proofness or resistance this is ip44 1875 watts resistant loading 15 amps max current 125 volts, working temperature is minus 20 to minus 60 Celsius, or minus 20 to 60. And yeah, that'd be plus. So minus 20 to 60 Celsius. So yeah, that'd be the... Yeah, so minus 10 to plus 70. Okay, I guess it's plus 70. Um, but anyways... Remote Control Smart Life app for both of these, compatible with Android, of course, and iOS Apple devices. Um, suitable for indoor and, and, and outdoor applications. That's a small one. This one here, though, it doesn't say anything about outdoor applications, but I would, I would see no problem using this outdoors if it's a nice day out, but if it's going to rain, I would definitely recommend bringing it into the house because it's not going to be water resistant or waterproof by any means. So definitely uh, be careful if you do use this outdoors. Otherwise, just leave it indoors and get yourself a proper outdoor unit. Um, but yeah, you plug in anything you plug into normal wall sockets, you plug into these things and then you can control them with the app, which is awesome. So, um, anyways, guys, um, hey, you want star ratings? I have no problem with either one of these units at four and a half out of five. Uh, nothing is actually ever perfect. Um, so that's why I never do five out of five. I definitely would recommend them. The instructions are actually really good and clear, you know, which is which is really nice. You want good, clear instructions to uh, to let you know. Um, I like how it all folds together here, like a little accordion here, and uh, it's very small and compact. You know, this one here for the power bar, you know, it's the same idea, except a little bit bigger, so it might be a little bit easier to read. I don't know, probably. Yeah, it would be. Um, you know, and they, they tell you about it and so on. Uh, the USB charger specs. There we go. Um, does it tell us anything? I'm looking to see how many amps it puts out for the charging circuit for USB. Uh, doesn't actually... Uh, Yeah, it doesn't tell us the amperage output of the USB. One USB charger says two. Oh, number one USB charger, two on off switch. Uh, three is indicator, four is socket. But it doesn't tell us uh, what kind of amperage output the USB has. Um, engaging that would be pretty difficult to figure out so I would probably estimate that it's got more than enough to charge any of your USB devices uh, some will take longer some won't depends on the size of your batteries too and your devices you're charging but um, otherwise sorry guys they didn't actually list the uh, the amperage in the USB so that would be something I think they need to update is what kind of amperage a socket because I know with some USB devices 
um, and we have a couple of them here, they actually warn you not to put it into too high of an amperage of an output socket. Because um, with USB, the higher the amp output, um, it charges your device quicker, right? Um, which there is some mathematics and science behind that, and um, I don't really want to get into all the technical jargon behind that, but you do have to practice some caution, but I wouldn't think that you'd have a problem, well actually you would never have a problem with charging a phone, an iDevice, these devices, no problem. Um, the only device we devices we have that they say to watch it with is our uh, our tablet pens. We have rechargeable tablet pens, and they they do specify a maximum amperage output. Um, and I know my charge station has, I believe it's a two amp or a three amp output, which is actually too high of an amperage output. Um, it's actually supposed to be under two amps into those pens. Um, but everything else I have, I've never had any issues, and they're designed to handle higher amp input anyways. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, so thanks very much for checking out the video and my big mess on my table now, uh, which I can now eliminate this cardboard and put that in the garbage. And I think I'll be hooking this one up tomorrow to my shop now. It's got, I know it's got 15 amps, so that's great. And this one, I'm probably going to put it in my studio and run my computer system and some other stuff. Not that I would ever suggest shutting your computer down with one of these, because never do that. That's like called hard crash. But um, I'm thinking just because it would make it a little more convenient for some of my charging devices to go in here uh, that are in my room. Like I could leave this in there now. Um, and uh, I have a few things that I can plug in and control from here. And you know, I just have to remember to leave one turned on all the time. But uh, anyways, that's it. That's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got lots out of it and you learned a lot. Very easy to set these up. If you don't remember, just go back into the beginning of the video where we set these up and you see how it's done. It's very, very simple. Uh, but like I said, for a first time user, when you run that app, it will ask you for your router password. That's the password it's asking for. Okay. It needs that connection to your router. So anyhow. See ya.